Hey scholars, today we are learning about another explorer. We just learned about Hernando, Hernando Cortez, and today we're going to be learning about Juan Rod Rod Rodriguez Cabrillo. So today you will need, you will need this piece of paper from your packet and a pencil. Feel free to fill in the blanks as we go along through this video, or you can rewatch it or see what you remember at the end. Juan Rodriguez, oh my gosh, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo is from Spain, and he is one of the first explorers to travel to California. Let's learn a little bit about his background. We know very little about Cabrillo, especially when he was a child. We don't even know where he was born. Some people say that he was born in Spain in 1499. Others say he was born in Portugal, that this pink arrow is pointing over to Spain and the yellow arrow is pointing over to Portugal. They're right next to each other in Europe. We do not even know if he set off on his first expedition when he was 10 or 11, but we do know he was very young, right around some of your ages. And he left Europe on a ship bound for Cuba. If you look at that map, they wouldn't have had a map that looks just like that because that looks like it came right off of Google, but that's where he was going. He was going all the way from here in Europe over to Cuba. As he grow old, grew older, he decided he wanted to be, oh, its purpose of this mission was to stop the other explorer, Cortez, or Hernando Cortez, like we know him, from getting too much power, wealth, and land. That's a picture of, of um, Cortez, just to remind you. As Cabrillo grew older, though, he decided he wanted to be on Cortez's side. He didn't want to fight against him or prevent him from becoming more powerful. So he deserted his ship and he joined Cortez just in time to fight the Aztecs. Cabrillo had two goals. The first goal was he had caught the attention of the gov governor of Guatemala another country in Central America. He, that governor wanted to establish trade routes with Asia, but Asia was all the way across the world. And it was a really far and pretty dangerous journey by ship. So Cabrillo wanted to find the Northwest Passage. The Northwest Passage was a legend, a place that a ship could go by across the ocean without having to go all the way around the bottom of South America. It doesn't exist. It's not real. And that, and he would spend a lot of his life looking for something that was not even real. And then finally, he wanted to gain riches. They were rumored to be in the northern part of California. And Cabrillo set sail for Navidad, Mexico with three ships and 200 men looking for those riches. We know now that there are riches in Northern California, or there were, which is what happened with the gold rush. There was riches found in Northern California. So he was sort of right, but he was looking for a place called the Seven Cities, and that did not exist either. His expedition. Cabrillo sailed north up the coast of Baja, California, and after three months, he landed in San Diego, but he claimed it for Spain. Cabrillo continued to sail north to San Clemente Island, Catalina Island, and the Channel Islands. I bet a lot of you have actually been to some of those. And Cabrillo was still in search of these rumored riches. He became friendly with a lot of the no local natives who were hoping that they would share what they knew about all of these riches with him. So he was looking for the Northwest Passage and he ended up landing right here. If you look at this map with the red circle, he landed in San Diego. 
And if we were to zoom in on this map of California, you, you would see right here this a map that says San Diego, this big red circle right next to California or Cabrillo National Monument. That is the Cabrillo Landing Site. Fun fact, guys, I went to college just five minutes down the road from the Cabrillo National Monument and landing site. Super cool. And then he went north to these islands that are circled in blue and all the way up to Monterey. But listen to this. Cabrillo continued his journey northward up the coast after he was in San Diego and the islands off the coast of Southern California. And in October, he broke his arm while anchored in the Channel Islands. This was just the beginning of his bad luck. Remember, we learned in the life of the explorer that they did not have doctors, that it was very easy to have something that shouldn't have been a very big deal become a really bad deal. By November, he had stopped in Monterey. Remember, we saw that on the map circled in blue up north. But he completely missed the entrance to the San Francisco Bay. And the crazy thing is, is that is so hard to spot. You can see right here in this map how little that little inlet is to get into the big bay that it wouldn't be found for another two hundred years. Crazy. And we also know that he might have found his riches if he had found that San Francisco Bay, because that's where so many people came for the gold rush. His expedition keeps getting worse, though, guys. Heavy storms developed and Cabrillo was forced to turn back and go back to Mexico. On his way home, and we learned about how dangerous some of those storms could be. On his way home, he stopped at the Channel Islands again. But this time, one of his men got into a brawl or a fight with some local tribesmen, so the Native Americans that were living on those lands. And in an effort to rescue his men, he slipped and fell, shattering his shin bone. That's right below your knee. And that bone got infected and turned to gangrene. Ugh, that's a really icky infection, guys. A lot of people would lose their limbs that got infected with it. Yuck, not what you want. The result of his voyage, not as happy as he was hoping. Cabrillo died from his injury, from just breaking his leg, you guys. That's how dangerous being an explorer was. You could die of a broken leg. And he died on January 3rd, 1543. Even while he was dying though, he urged his men to continue the search for the Northwest Passage and the rumored seven cities of gold, which remember, aren't real. And his men never found it. And they returned to Mexico by April, 1543. At the time, Cabrillo's expedition was considered a failure. But today, we actually recognize it as a success because Cabrillo was the first explorer ever to leave a written account of the California coastline. It doesn't necessarily mean he was the first explorer to ever see the California coastline, but he was the first one to write about it. And that map or the, these journal entries to the side are actually his real journals. Remember, we talked about in the life of an explorer, how important it was for explorers to be able to write because they would explain the places that they found and make plans for future explorations. And that's what he did. He's important because he laid the groundwork for future explorers to expand their empire and record accurate information about people and places. Remember, he was traveling and exploring based on myths and legends about a Northwest Passage and the seven cities of gold, and they weren't real. But he left a written record that provided real facts and real observations of the people and places he had seen and experienced 
which was a really big deal that long ago. So cool, you guys. That's why we learned about Cabrillo, because he was the first one ever to write about the California coastline. And today we have the Cabrillo National Monument. That is his statue at the monument right there. And there's a beautiful lighthouse I'm showing you because I went to college just super close to it. And I went here all the time. It's so cool. And some of you could even do the Cabrillo National Monument and landing site for your landmark report if you wanted to. It's super beautiful. All right, guys, I hope that you are as excited as I am to keep learning about the explorers, and we will see you next time.